Um, hello everyone. I'm happy to be here and tell you a new topic today. Uh, today lecture we will have on English. So uh, if you can join us, please welcome. My name is uh, Prasdeva Sofia. Um, I finished the um, Moscow Architectural Institute bachelor degree and master degree. And uh, right now I am uh, in Israel, in Tel Aviv, uh, and working in uh, international bureau. Um, so I think uh, I also I am uh, working with uh, Art Clever, and I am a teacher for SketchUp plus Photoshop. So this is little introduction, and uh, let's start with little lecture. Today we will have rather popular, I think, topic, which called prefabricated buildings. And um, actually, this topic um, is, um, it borns uh, after a lot of um, discussions. Uh, and uh, we decided uh, that, uh, our team decided that this topic is, it will be really useful for our students uh, and uh, for um, most of young architects. And uh, this topic uh, uh, and lecture based on my research of master degree. So most of this information I collect myself, I systemize myself, and I hope it will be visible, understandable, and uh, enjoyed. First of all, what is prefabricated building is? Um, it is buildings which were built in really small time. So it is actually about speed of construction. And this speed of construction is also connected with functions. We can't actually build um, the random building. Sometimes we don't really need this uh, uh, speed. Of course, all buildings should be built uh, really fast, but uh, the prefabricated uh, system, it is uh, the system which you can use even in emergency situations. So, um, beginning with theoretical model, um, let me a little bit introduce all this uh, um, information. Uh, on the base of the research, I already systemized myself the methods of the selection for the technologies of the rapid construction. So we will see how to select um, the methods and technologies what you really need in your building, depending on functions and uh, other stuff. And uh, um, according to this uh, system, uh, in the end, actually you, you yourself, you will be able to construct or imagine how your building will be constructed. Let's start. First of all, um, in the beginning, we need to decide what kind of function we need. Uh, there, is, um, there are the prefabricated public buildings, the prefabricated private buildings, and other, 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 a lot of functions. But um, this, the feature of the prefabricated building functions are really impact on the construction of this building. The choice of uh, special planning components like height, availability of public spaces, spaces with a specialized functions, for example, hospitals uh, or other stuff and, and other things. So we, first of all, need to decide what kind of functions will be in our building. Uh, because actually you can uh, project uh, different types of um, public buildings too, and different types of uh, private buildings. Uh, private buildings can be fixed uh, individual uh, residential structures, or uh, residential complexes, or uh, relocation uh, uh, system of structures, so it can be different things. Or, for example, in public buildings, it can be temporary or fixed exhibition complex. So it is also will for impact uh, on your decisions what kind of structure you will use. Temporary, it is one. Fixed, it is already another. 
short-term hospitals like COVID hospitals. They are also um, really individual systems and the seasonal uh, hotels, for example, uh, which you really can't use um, in winter time, for example. Uh, in function, you also can find the agricultural buildings or urban production or even the military systems. But in this topic, in this lecture, we will speak about other functions. We will focus on public and private. If you already decide what kind of building you're going to build, we can continue. The other stage, uh, the other step uh, of the decisions which we which we had to make, it is actually the speed of con construction, which is uh, uh, determined by the construction period and depends on the type of construction. So what kind of speeds of construction we can find in real life? First of all, I think it is uh, emergency housing. For example, in public uh, buildings, emergency housing can be houses which we can build after earthquake or flooding. Or for example, on this picture, you can see uh, the little, little part of a COVID hospital uh, in um, China. So emergency public housing, it is really, really fast constructing buildings. And non-emergency housing, which we also can uh, build in public system, it is actually um, marketplace, the season marketplace, for example. Uh, in Moscow, you can uh, often uh, usually see this kind of uh, little marketplaces, which are located um, on um, every street uh, where you can walk and chill. And emergency housing, for example, in uh, um, not public system, it is refugee camps, for example, uh, emergency housing. And non-emergency housing, it is already country houses or other little uh, um, private uh, luxury buildings. So after you decide what kind of um, speed is your building, we can decide the number of stories and the number of stories of the building affects the construction period and also affect the optimal weight of the structure. So uh, according what kind of uh, uh, level you will choose, it will impact on your uh, speed of construction also and it will um, impact on other topics which we will speak later and for example uh, you can find the single story and multi-story systems uh, you can see that there is not not really a lot of systems for public uh, um, for public emergency housing in multi-story systems so in public, uh, in public emergency housing, you can usually build the single story. That's why all the hospitals, uh, most, most of the um, prefabricated hospitals usually a single story. So uh, here you can see, I write down some uh, projects which you can find yourself a little bit later. Uh, so the hotels, and the mobile hospitals um, together in single story. And uh, at the same time, in multi story building, it also can be a hospital and, um, for example, a rather pretty school. In single story, in uh, uh, private housing, it can be housing for homeless people. Uh, and at the same, same time, it can be rather luxury uh, country house. Um, one of one of these country house we are on one of them we are working in our uh, program while we studying sketchup and photoshop so after you decide what kind of what how much stories you will have in your building you can go to the next step and uh, um, one of the last step it is actually the adaptability and the adaptability of the building is determined by its possible seasonal 
use and comfortable overall param parameters for um, permanent transportation. So adaptability, it is actually about trans transport. Can you transport your building? Can you move your own building? And the relationship between the terms of construction, numbers of floors and waste affects the, the mo uh, of, on this adaptability. So, according to what kind of decisions you made before, you can go and make your last choice. Uh, and uh, there is actually three choices which you can um, take. Short term or seasonal. It is um, what we speak about before, uh, about uh, seasonal markets, for example. Short term, seasonal or short-term hospital, and so on, so on. As a structure, a relocation. It is also about uh, um, the function. For example, it can be a relocated uh, hotel, or it can be relocated hospital. It also depends on uh, what you will have to do with this hospital, for example. For example, you can uh, rebuild it. And move, or you can put all these little pieces and parts uh, on on your own car and move it, and do not rebuild it um, absolutely. And the final uh, variant, it is actually fixed construct uh, structure. So it is something what is fixed on the place, and you can't do anything with it. Maybe you can add something and connect with the previous pieces of this building, but you can't really move this building anymore. So, after you decide um, everything, you can go to the final state step. And the final step, it is actually, you can already see all these variants uh, of the structure you can use according to all your decisions which you made before. Uh, of course, of course, we have uh, terrain features. The number of floors and mobility um, in turn determine the type of uh, foundation, uh, which also depends uh, um, of um, terrain features. The choice of foundation also affects the complexity of, trans uh, of transportation of the structure, uh, but uh, in my research, I didn't focus on uh, basement systems, but you need to know that uh, there is a uh, different types of soil and relief and uh, uh, climate uh, conditions and, uh, for example, uh, seismic activities also. So, of course, uh, according uh, to some really hard impact system uh, of the terrain, you need to work with basement uh, too. For now, I think we are ready to know about all of these uh, seven systems. Um, and here it is. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to discuss uh, um, a lot uh, about each of these systems, but I hope that we will have time and we will have uh, a day when I can show you my um, research uh, results uh, and uh, we can speak about uh, each of these uh, systems. For now, let's begin with uh, tent construction. Uh, I think that uh, tent construction is actually ideal for covering large spaces. And uh, uh, it is an example of the first mobile structure system, for example, in uh, uh, Rome camps uh, in many centuries before, they also used tent constructions. And uh, it is one of the first uh, uh, system uh, uh, of the housing. Uh, the next is uh, tent with frame structures. Mm, it is actually Kind, kind like um, uh, tent construction, but it is more uh, durable and practical. So um, 
you can see the difference it is also a stance but it can be um, built for a longer period especially volumetric systems it is something what i had actually i had uh, to create this uh, name in uh, Russian language uh, because uh, um, I didn't find the perfect uh, name uh, to um, explain what exactly I mean when I use this uh, spatial volumetric system. I will try to explain in few words. Uh, kind of, this system it is works together with the volume. This system can be built next to the building or it can hold the building itself, or it can hold the building for some time, and then you can take off this volume, take off the building out of this system and to remove it. So there are actually many interesting decisions about this um, system. I hope I will show you one day. Um, right now, it is it, this volumetric system can't work uh, actually itself. It it works uh, together with our uh, with other types of systems. Expandable structures. It is actually as you can see something like can, what can be transformed immediately. So there are um, flexible in planning. And uh, uh, one of the most I think biggest problem it is actually in joints between this uh, uh, construction so the joints it is one of the um, problem with which we can work or which we can't use in some parts of function for example we can't use this system um, in uh, covid hospitals in some parts of covid hospitals because in covid hospitals we had uh, to focus on the ventilation on the system of ventilation so um, we need to be, be careful with this system container structures i think it is the most famous structure which we can um, think and use while we speak about prefabricated building so i think i don't need to speak a lot about containers or ship containers of course uh, all of us know how how they um, built one on each other and uh, uh, we can move a little bit modular structures it is um, it reminds us uh, the container system so it can be fixed together all these little modules but this model's built uh, um, on a uh, factories. So uh, uh, for example, these models can be built uh, with bigger height uh, and it will be more comfortable housing. Um, and actually, we are working with this system while we're studying SketchUp and Photoshop. So uh, um, in our lectures you will be able to find out uh, how you can build all of these modelers and uh, uh, sticking them together to make your own uh, little pretty house the final part it is actually the panel structures and panels construction uh, uh, method is one of the most flexible method uh, of construction and uh, um, you can work with these uh, panels uh, really cool because um, uh, all of these panels um, transfer on uh, um, on cars and uh, uh, in this system you also can change the height of your building so this one uh, these uh, um, panels are really useful but i think that they are less uh, um, adaptable so you can't really uh, rebuild them and to move them to another place you can but it will be mm, not very good variant i think but but in this system you can build other parts to the to your existing house uh, and to make your house a little bit wider so it is some kind of the growing housing system very interesting one uh, each of these systems are very interesting. I I hope maybe you will mm, wait until the other lecture and we will discuss about everything. But right now we need to go.
the next stage, uh, the next step, uh, I think I want to show you the current situation where we can actually see and use uh, the prefabricated systems uh, in housing. And the topic which uh, me and our team decided to take it is uh, refugee camps. So the refugee camps, uh, it is temporary settlement built to receive refugees and people in refugee-like situation. Uh, refugee camps usually accommodate um, displaced people who have um, fled their home country. Uh, I think right now it is rather um, it will it will unfortunately it will become the popular topic and I think that we are as architects we need to be in topic too. So let's look uh, what kind of refugee camps we can find out if we will Google it. And you can see that uh, there is a lot of uh, situations uh, last years um, because of COVID uh, and uh, other stuff. And you can see how actually horrible uh, um, these refugee camps are. Of course, they are work, of course, and they, they are prefabricated and they build fast and they help people, of course. But uh, um, the level of the leaf uh, for this building is actually actually really, really low. And let's speak about maybe um, existing camps uh, uh, which I found and uh, which I want to show you. Um, wait a second, please. <laughs> I need to drink water. <laughs> Uh, by the way, if you will have uh, questions, uh, you can write down them uh, and uh, um, I can translate them in English uh, and uh, answer you. So don't worry, write down, I'm waiting <laughs> and I'm ready to answer. Begin with the, uh, Berlin, Germany. Tempo Homes. Uh, Tempo Homes, uh, it is a container camp in Berlin and it accommodates uh, refugees. Uh, Germany is famous for its policy of national uh, integration. In the last century, many programs were organized to accept Jews in Germany. And in the last uh, 21st century, and there, is any, there are a lot of um, um, active integration uh, of uh, Palestinians uh, into life of uh, German relation. So, this is uh, the solution what uh, um, Germany found. Uh, they built the re refugee camps um, next to the fields. So they tried to uh, integrate these uh, refugee camps uh, next to the residential housings and so on and so on. And we can uh, see what kind of system they use. So it is actually a modular container system. It is not. Uh, it it can be. It can be uh, the container system, of course, and they. You can see how they connect it together to make one big model for one or two families. And uh, uh, here you can see that uh, this is rather simple but uh, fast solution. Uh, and it is actually really works. And by the way, this system reminds me uh, the. Um, model uh, um, COVID hospital in uh, uh, in China, and actually the same maybe the clues or same system were used uh, uh, in Ukraine. Um, it is the same German mobile containers. Uh, it, they were used uh, for refugees from Donbas. Um, the settlement uh, was built. Um, and the expense of the German government. One of the disadvantages of such uh, temporary dwellings is, uh, um, in some cases, housing that was offered for as temporary for three to six months becomes uh, permanent for the majority. So a lot of people uh, actually stuck stuck in these uh, modular towns for a lot 
um, for bigger period for five years and more and um, because of uh, some reasons they can't really move uh, out and this system prefabricated system is not really suitable for longer living period and uh, because of this i think that one of the topic uh, for architects is to make um, these prefabricated uh, buildings more um, um, to make them better, to make them maybe more uh, livable, colorful, for example, or uh, try to make them uh, mm, with better construction system. So let's go on. And what kind of we we already saw how how these refugees actually can be and uh, can be in real life. But what kind of project and proposals we can find in the internet to change this situation, to uh, change this existing, um, not really beautiful <laughs> and comfortable buildings <laughs> for refugees uh, to another one, another one. And uh, in um, two, uh, 2016, uh, about uh, 60,000 immigrants, uh, refugees arrived in Netherlands, and Netherlands uh, decided to make some kind of a competition uh, for this um, dwelling, uh, um, for dwelling for uh, refugees. And uh, this competition named uh, called uh, a home away from home. Um, and in this competition, uh, were de developed. Uh, different variants and complexes uh, uh, of the houses uh, for migrations for migrants let's watch how they look like and here we are just just look how pretty life can be <laughs> well let's uh, read a little bit <laughs> one of the winning projects uh, is actually the rest settle it is on the right side uh, with uh, um, polystyrene houses. Mm, so uh, such a dwelling is not afraid of rain or fires. Uh, in accommodates uh, uh, it, it accommodates the bed, the kitchen, and other stuff. I think that it will be really interesting to Google and to read a little bit more about all all of these little different variants in this competition, um, because the other one. It is, look at this, the triangular one. It is the solar cabin project. Um, frame construction. Frame construction, uh, it is, um, we didn't speak about this system, but frame construction, it is uh, also a um, prefabricated uh, system uh, of the house. It is, it is actually, it is somehow connected with the uh, volumetric uh, uh, space system, which I um, explained before. So, a frame construction of the house with solar panels on the roof. On this side of the roof, you can see here it is the solar panels. And these panels actually will be able to supply not only the houses themselves, but also neighborhooding settlements. So, these uh, refugee camps will not be just only the um, they will not just only use the space next to the uh, apartments, next to the in in, in the in the uh, city. They also will work on the city. Uh, the comfort city project. It is also project uh, very interesting decision. Just on the look, uh, the compact uh, houses uh, for small towns or. Uh, Variant of reconstruction uh, of abandoned buildings, um, including empty prisons. I forgot to say that uh, this. Uh, um, um, <laughs> first of all, Netherlands decided uh, uh, to put all refugees on uh, uh, on empty prisons. Uh, this was also interesting decision, and uh, this project uh, connected with. Uh, uh, abandoned buildings including prisons uh, cost just only look it is 
somehow a little building inside bigger building so here uh, on the on this picture you can see how it works in bigger space you can find uh, comfortable uh, little uh, buildings it can be maybe um be without um, extra construction system like uh, um to save heat and so on so on because this building already uh, stay inside the building very very interesting decision uh, the project a, um, a voluntary wood house represents a cubic structure of compact wooden house it is simple one model uh, system of the housing you can find them um, in very different uh, places and you can see how it really reminds the ukrainian uh, or uh, um, berlin buildings it is also models it is also models which can be joined together or put one on into another but just only look how different they can be all these models and what we can find in uh, new technologies new technologies it is one of the best way to find the solutions in hard situations and uh, a project which i want to show you it is a cortex shelter uh, the, the um, refugee shelters could be built uh, for from concrete fabric in 24 hours it is a uh, cut work studio say this so cut work studio project uh, uh, the concept for shelter uh, for refugee camps that could be built uh, by adding water to concrete textile and uh, to make this uh, um, work just only in 24 hours. Sounds really interesting. And uh, on this project, I really want to show you the little video uh, in the internet, but let's a little bit read about this project. Um, conceptual architecture studio designed uh, the shelter to be built with cortex uh, composites, a type uh, of load pack uh, concrete sheeting that can be rolled, uh, rolled into place and set into permanent uh, from by adding water. Let's uh, uh, see what kind of models they invite. They actually invite just only one one simple model, which can which they can repeat uh, a lot of times um, to protect these models from inside uh, uh, to save heat. And from this uh, system, you can also um, project different types of public spaces. So you can see it here and i want to show you how it works this is the site where you can find it so they roll the dry concrete over fixed together and then they uh, add water to make this uh, uh, concrete uh, hard About this project, you can uh, read more in the internet, and uh, I really recommend this. Just look at it. Very cute. I really love it. I think it is maybe my favorite project. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Uh, the last topic um, which I want to show you it is actually color. Um, I think that color it is one of the most important uh, uh, thing, and colors and the sun and um, light it it really can help uh, uh, people in difficult situation, even if you're sad. And you can walk uh, uh, on the street, and if it is sunny, uh, you little by little, but you become a little bit more happy. So I think color, it is one of the most important part in um, this kind of uh, uh, camps. 
And project which I want to show is Teeny House Community, uh, which was a project by uh, leather architects in Los Angeles. And this project is really exists, so it, it built. Um, this uh, architectural studio converts uh, several uh, left left leftover plots in Los Angeles into micro home dwelling. Um, and this dwelling is actually for homeless people. It's not really about the refugees, but this uh, project uh, can be also used for refugees. But um, in the beginning, it was used for homeless uh, homelessness people in Los Angeles. And here it is. How, how just only look at this? How they pretty up. Um, this is small, small, small buildings. They can uh, uh, be, and in this colorful system, they become the really funny, attractive uh, uh, building system, I think. Uh, on the territory of a settlement where, where there are 39 uh, prefabricated houses with um, an area of about six, Square meters, just only six square meters, but at least people have place to stay and live. Uh, modular structures are designed for one or two residents. Inside, you can find bed and other stuff. You also can. I, I recommend you to read uh, about this uh, uh, project uh, because uh, um, I find found it really, really funny and really interesting. So how it looks like and we shouldn't forget why while, while we are working with uh, um, uh, with housing and with people we shouldn't forget about uh, the surrounding area just on the look they they work with all the site and uh, it is really cool Maybe, maybe projects shouldn't be so colorful, of course, yes, but uh, <laughs> why not? Why not? Well, I think that it is what all what I wanted to show you. Um, also, I, I, I want to tell you that there is actually the usual and normal housing which you can find in the internet, but I tried to find you the most interesting variants and the most impressive so learn find out um, try to make yourself um, all these kind of systems uh, try to combine try to uh, work with them try to learn them um, invite your own uh, components uh, and uh, try to build the prefabricated building yourself thank you very much for your attention i hope my lecture was interesting for you and uh, if you have any questions i can wait for some time while i am waiting i can uh, um, tell you uh, what we on what we are working in our program, in our student program. Um, in our program, uh, you can find the uh, the pro uh, the Ah, sorry. <laughs> there is already uh, questions in chat. Uh, I'm waiting while, while I will get them. So I will speak a little bit about uh, the um, about the course. Uh, right now, you can find course uh, on Russian language, uh, but I hope uh, very soon we will have the equivalent in English uh, for our for other students. Oh. 
Oh, so nice. So many questions. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Okay, I, I will answer questions first. Uh, thank you so much. I was always interested in the topic. Um, is it your research or PhD or diploma project? Or thank you, great job. Thank you very much. Uh, it is actually my master degree uh, project uh, for of uh, two years of research. Uh, I was working not just only with uh, refugee camps. Actually, I was also working worked with um, uh, <clears throat> seasonal markets, uh, COVID hospital, uh, and uh, um, for guest workers, uh, the housing for guest workers, and uh, uh, for potential potential refugees from uh, Belarus. I also thought about this uh, uh, situation uh, some years before. So yes, it is my uh, uh, master degree uh, diploma project. It's not PhD. It's master degree. The second second level. Uh, Sophia, do you have any international examples of of our view, or maybe you can recommend any platform book catalog? Thanks. Um, what kind of information you you need exactly you need? What kind of uh, catalog platform? Maybe you know uh, what what I use. It is actually Arch Daily, um, and uh, uh, this platform also I use. And you can see the design. Design. I also read a lot of things there, but actually all the information which I found, uh, which I showed you here, I found in special literature, um, in um, in libraries. So you need to be sometimes you need to be student uh, to get uh, into these libraries uh, and so on and so on. If you will need some kind of links, um, maybe somehow I can find them, but it was very long time ago. So interesting. Thank you. I believe we are all need more projects and uh, professionals, competitions, researchers. Ah, oh, it's so 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 sweet. Thank you very much. You know, everyone can be a researcher. So I wish you to find your uh, your topic uh, where you will be great professional and uh, show everyone uh, what you already found. Uh, what countries really um, re release that and how long does it exist? Thank you very much. Exist, what exactly exists this project? Or um, what exists, what you are asking? If you are asking about uh, um, refugee camps, actually right now all Europe uh, needs uh, refugee camps uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> If you are speaking about the prefabricated buildings, it is also depends of uh, um, it is also depends of situation. For example, even in Russia, we very need uh, uh, prefabricated uh, systems. Uh, um, if we not build uh, if we build a high level building, yeah, of course, it is other type of prefabricated, but. In this lecture, we speak about uh, one, three, or maximum five level uh, um, prefabricated buildings. So actually, um, it everything depends of um, function. But prefabrication, it is, it can be used everywhere. It is very popular. Um, oh. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for such a great lecture. Thank you that you listen to me. So, uh, oh, one more question. Do you know any kind of price terms for the emergency constructions? Or maybe you can recommend any resource to learn more? Um, you know, uh, I can't recommend the one source actually because, as I already told you, I I learned it from different places, and I really wanted to systemize all this information. Actually, what I showed you right now, it is my own uh, systemized uh, information, and uh, I uh, 
found it from uh, a lot of places uh, for, for two years and I tried to make the information visible and comfortable to understand. So once um, I actually I want to create the site about this information, but right now I don't have any opportunity, but it is in plans. Maybe one day <laughs> I will uh, send you the link uh, on this site and you will find all the information. Right now there is no one one source for prefabricated uh, buildings. Uh, a lot of and uh, small information in one, not enough information in other, and so on, so on, so on. Maybe maybe you can find the uh, special literature in libraries. Um, all of these were, were built. Uh, you know, if you are asking about what kind of systems were built, um, yes, in examples, in current situation, uh, uh, what I showed you in Berlin and Ukraine, it was built. Uh, and uh, in uh, uh, Netherlands, uh, I don't know exactly how this competition uh, Ends, uh, but uh, this project uh, were built, and I'm not really sure uh, were they uh, um, built in other places except the competition. But some kind of some kind of these systems were built, and they uh, I, I just showed you the Netherlands competition because a lot of different uh, uh, variants were shown in uh, uh, one topic in this competition. But all these systems are working. And uh, again, if we will have time next uh, next days, uh, I will show you the other projects if you want. And Cortex, uh, a Cortex shelter, it is just on the project. It's project. It's uh, they are not really exist, but I think it it could be. And uh, the last uh, project, Tiny House, uh, they are built. Yes, they are working. They are built in Los Angeles right now. Okay, I think that I answered all the questions. Thank you very much for asking me and listening to me. I'm very, very happy and I hope that everything was understandable. And uh, <laughs> uh, I'm waiting you in our course uh, where you can learn uh, a lot of uh, how to build uh, prefabricated building, building yourself. Uh, and we will use... Um, um, we will use uh, the project uh, which called uh, Double Dome um, and work with model system. Uh, also, I want to tell you that uh, prefabricated can be, be not just only in the building system. Uh, the fast projecting can also connect it with uh, um, products which you use. And uh, SketchUp and uh, Photoshop, uh, it is the most suitable uh, um, systems and uh, technologies uh, which can be used uh, in uh, fast uh, competitions, uh, in the fast projecting. So I highly recommend you to um, try to know more about uh, these uh, programs. Most of your ideas and uh, um, conceptual ideas and visualizations that you can uh, easily make uh, in uh, uh, SketchUp. So, thank thank you very much. <laughs> I hope that everything was interesting and uh, have a good day. Have a good day. See you.